we will now sing our theme song, Cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood.
No language my rapture can tell I know that the light of His presence With me doth continually dwell Redeemed, redeemed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Redeemed how I love to proclaim it His child and forever I am His love is the theme of my song. His love is the theme of my song. His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, His child and forever. My name is Pastor Walter, and I'm the children's pastor at Church in the Valley. I am so glad that we can spend this time together this weekend for Families of Hope, and we have our own program called Kids of Hope. You know what? It's kind of been a scary year this year. You know, there's been a lot of news about coronavirus and COVID-19 and all this other stuff. You know, maybe there's been some big changes, like we can't see our grandma and grandpa anymore, or maybe we're going to church and it's different, or we're going to school and it's different. Maybe we're not going to school. We're just staying home for school. We're staying home for church. Whatever it is, this year has been kind of crazy, and it's felt like a really bad dream for some people. But you know what? I bet it doesn't feel as bad as Mr. Badger. Here, I have a special video today and we're going to talk about this badger who looks like he has no hope and so as we play this video it'll be some very custom special nature narration oh my name is mr badger oh i'm having a bad day oh i got this snake i thought he was coming over give me a hug and now i'm trying to have me for supper let go of me mr snake let go Wow, did you hear that badger? He was having a horrible day. That giant python snake was trying to eat him. And you know what? Not only was that bad, right? He's, the snake is trying to eat him. But then the next thing that happens is that this jackal comes over and bites him right on the bum. Then it goes from bad to worse. Well, you know what? You, I think, have more hope than that little badger does. You know, because today we're learning about how to be a kid of hope. The three things we're learning today is that we want to be hopeful. Number two, we want to be careful. And number three, we just want to be a kid. You know what? You need to be a kid and let the adults do the worrying. Let's open with a word of prayer. Everybody fold your hands. Close your eyes. Let's pray for God to help us be hopeful. 
Dear Jesus, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. Think that no matter what's going on, how scary the news is or how different things get at school or at church or wherever we're at Walmart, Lord, we know that we can have hope in you. Be with us today as we learn how to trust you and know that you have great plans for our lives while we still need to be careful. In Jesus' name, all of God's children said... Amen. Amen. All right. Well, you know what? Right now we have some very special songs from Pastor Rob and Bethany. It's if you're happy and you know it, let's sing along. One, One, two, two, three. Hello. My name is Rob. And I'm Beth. This is Marigold. And what's your name? Eliza. Eliza. We are going to sing a few songs with you. Jesus makes us so happy that we want to clap and stomp and say, Amen! Amen. Yay! You say, hooray, hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen! If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen! If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Let's sing praise him, praise him, all ye little children, the little ones and the big ones. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love. Can you sing love him, love him? Love him, love him. All ye little children, God is love, God is love. Love him, love him, all ye little children, God is love, God is love. Very good. Jesus loves the little ones like me, me, me. Jesus loves the little ones like me, me, me. Little ones like me sat upon his knee. Jesus loves the little ones like me, me, me. Who else does he love? Daddy and me. And the big ones? Yeah. Jesus loves the older ones like you, you, you. Jesus loves the older ones like you, you, you. Older ones like you, Jesus loves them too. Jesus loves the older ones like you, you, you. loves you. You, you, you. <laughs> you know what? Jesus really does love the little ones like you, you, you. And he loves the older folks like me, me, me as well. Isn't that an amazing promise in the Bible? Well, hey, we're learning how God wants us to be hopeful. He wants us to be careful. And for you kids, he just wants you to be a kid and let adults do the word. Let's talk about being hopeful. It's been a pretty crazy year. You know, we go to school, a lot of us, we got to wear masks. Or if we go to Walmart, we got to wear a mask. You know, there's hand sanitizer everywhere to put on our hands. And it's just been a very different year. Maybe we can't go and visit our, our grandmas and our grandpas the way that we would like to. It's been kind of scary. And on the news, it always seems like the news is getting worse and worse. Especially here during the winter time as... <laughs> Ever have your mask get caught in your glasses? Happens to me sometimes. In wintertime, it seems the numbers are going up. Well, you know what? Jesus doesn't want us to be scared. He wants us to be careful, but he wants us to be hopeful. Well, you know, and there's a Bible story where the disciples, Jesus' best friends, they were super scared. There was this huge storm, and they thought they were going to die. <gasps> the witness of stuff on the news is they were in a boat, a little boat, in a big storm. And that can be very scary. Let's see how Jesus helped his best friends to be hopeful when they were super scared. One day, after preaching to a crowd of people, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. You got it. 
So they got into a boat and started out. Other boats followed him too. And as they sailed across, Jesus fell asleep. Uh -oh. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke Jesus up, shouting, Hey, Jesus, wake up! Save us! We are going to drown! Don't you care if we drown? Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves, saying, Silence! Be still! Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Where is your faith? The disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. Wow, would that be scary to be in a little boat in a big storm? But you know what? Jesus was so trusting. He was so hopeful that God in heaven was taking care of him that he fell asleep in the storm. And when he woke up, though, he knew that he had the power where he stopped the storm. Well, you know what? If he could help his best friends be hopeful in that crazy storm back then, he could help us be hopeful right now. And what he can help us do is he might not calm the storm on the outside, but what Jesus can do, he can calm the storm on the inside. And one of the ways he can do that is by, by reminding us of these awesome Bible promises we have in God's words. We're looking at God's word to find some amazing Bible promises. First of all, we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It says, I have good plans for you. Let's say it all together. Ready? One, two, three. I have good plans for you. I don't plan to hurt you. I plan to give you hope and a good future. Isn't that an amazing promise that God has? He wants to give us hope. He wants to fill our lives like this balloon with hope. There, you see how it says hope, right? Well, Jesus, we're getting scared inside. We have a storm like those disciples are in. We're like, oh, what's going to happen? I keep hearing all the scary news. And, and at school, we, we keep hearing about people getting sick. And we're worried that we can't see our grandma or grandpa. All that stuff. You know what? God wants to give us hope. If we trust in him, we can have hope that God is going to carry us through this. There we go. We've got a balloon full of hope. Another amazing Bible promise is found in Deuteronomy. Let's go there, 2618, okay? Drew 2618. It says the Lord, let's say it all together, ready? You say it at home. One, two, three. The Lord has declared today that you are his people, his own special treasure, just as he promised that you must obey all his commands. You know what? You are super special to Jesus. He thinks you're his special treasure. You know, some, th some some people that really love treasure, we would call pirates. Arr, matey. Tis treasure in these parts. Arr, tis gold, I say, gold. Those pirates, right? They just love me treasure. Ooh, I just love me gold and silver and pearls and diamonds. Well, they love treasure so much. But Jesus loves you more. So no matter how much a pirate loves treasure, so happy to find treasure, Jesus is more happy with you. He loves you. You are his treasured possession. And he loves you more than pirates tis love gold. He loves you more than pirates love gold. Well, another Bible promise that can make us feel hopeful if we feel scared inside is found in 1 John 3. one. It's in the New Testament. Let's say it all together. One, two, three. See what great love. The Father has lavished on us that we should be called the what? The children of God. You know that you are God's child? That you not only have your earthly father, but you have a father in heaven who loves you even more than your mom and dad do. And that's where that Bible says... And Jesus has love, lavished his love on us. This is crazy. You think the God of the universe is so perfect, but he has lavished his love on us. We, little imperfect people, so tiny, and God, the huge God of the universe, loves little bitty us. 
That's some crazy love. Now, you know, when he says lavish on us, it's kind of like I think of this toast. This toast is kind of like us. I love putting some jam on my toast. We think, ah, here we put some jam on our toast here. You know, we'll spread it out there a little bit. And uh, normally we think here, this is kind of, you know, how you spread the jam on the toast. You know, the Bible doesn't say he put a little bit of love on us. He says he has lavished his love on us. He's just dumped his love on us like this toast. Oh, let's see if we can get that out of there. And we're gonna get the spoon out here. Ready? Oh, yeah. And there, and there. And you know what? I got this whole jar of jam. Almost a whole jar. A whole jar of jam there on this. Look at this toast. This toast is just covered with jam. You know, Jesus didn't put a little bit of love in us. He covered us with his love so much that he died on the cross. You are his treasured possession. He has plans to give you hope in a future. He has lavished you. See that toast? You can barely see the toast. He has lavished you, smothered you in his amazing love. The perfect, huge, powerful God of the universe calls you his little boy or his little girl. That's incredible incredible love that we have been lavished with. And you know, that is something that can give us hope in tough times. We know right now we're going to have game time. We're going to learn more about the power of prayer and how knowing God's love for us and praying God's promises in our life can give us some powerful prayer to help us feel hopeful. Let's watch this game with Clayton and Kodiak now. Let's go outside. So today we're learning about prayer and how to have God's power in our lives. And of course, a drill needs power. It doesn't do anything right now. You got to get the power. And to have God's power in your life, the key is prayer. Prayer is what unleashes God's power in our lives. And we're going to unleash some power from this soda. Again, just like the drill, this, uh, this soda is actually carbonated natural spring water, if you can see that. This already has the power in it. Here, Kodak, come here. Shake that up. Okay, that didn't work out so good. But it already has the power in it, and we're going to unleash it by drilling a hole on top. And the game is going to be see who can shoot the furthest, Kodiak or Clayton. Okay? So, uh... All right, Kodak's messing around having fun. So we're going to drill a hole in both these bottles, just using a standard drill. I'd call that drill a little bit dull. Let's get the second one here. Okay, the fresh out. So now, like we showed you in the dough around parking lot, we're gonna shake this up, put our thumb over the top. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna put your thumb over it, then you're gonna shake it, then you're gonna turn it sideways to let go. Okay, now see I don't have much water in here so it won't shoot very much. Okay, now to come back. All right, you guys ready? Use your thumb, Kodiak, use your thumb. Okay, when I say go, you're gonna shake as much as you want. It's not a race, Shoot as much as you want, then try and shoot daddy, okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Are you gonna shoot? That mic is on. Oh, jeez, that mic is on. You monkey. Look at this kid did. At least it was carbonated water. They shot me. They shot ya. Red Ridge. All right, that's it. Clayton is the winner this time. Raise your hands, Clayton. Clayton is the winner, and for his prize, he gets soaked by daddy. Just kidding. Not in real life. Not in real life, he says, after you did this. All right, well, prayer unleashes God's power in your life, but unlocks his power in your life so you can have the power of the Holy Spirit and really change the world and make it a better place. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Kodak and Clayton, for that game time. Well, just like there was power in that bottle, you just had to shake it up to release it. There's power in God's word. There's power. One of the things that can help shake up God's word to release it is to pray God's promises, right? Like you might talk to me and say, Jesus, I feel scared right now, but you promised to give me a future and a hope. Jesus, I'm feeling all alone right now, but you said that you've lavished me with your love, that I'm your child. And Jesus, I'm scared right now, but I know that you love me more than pirates love treasure. And, and you pray those prayers, claiming God's promise that can really help you have more hope and peace in your life. Well, now that we have that hope and that peace in our life, we want to be careful. But some people might think, you know what? I've got to be careful. I'm like super kid. God will take care of me, so I don't need to worry about nothing. I just do whatever I want. Well, do you think that's the way Jesus wants us to live? We well, you know the devil told Jesus something very similar to that. Let's see how Jesus replied in this next Bible video from Saddleback Kids. Then Satan took him to Jerusalem and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. Oh, what? For the word of God says he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Wait. But Jesus said, the word of God also says, you must not test the Lord your God. Now. And so Jesus passed the second test. Now Jesus was so smart, even though the devil tried to trick him by using a Bible promise to trick him and say, jump off this building. You don't have to be careful. God will take care of you. And he said, no, no, don't test God. So even though God does promise to take care of us, he promises to take care of us as we do our best and we're careful and then we trust God with the rest. And you know what? I Just a couple quick reminders here. The, as we hear about all the people who are sick, remember there's way more people who aren't sick. Are there hundreds or thousands of people who are still healthy for every one person who's sick with coronavirus. That might make you feel a little less scared because remember in Canada there's 38 million people and on the planet there's 8 billion. That's way more healthy people than there are sick people. Okay, the other thing also is remember the coronavirus isn't very dangerous for children, right? Not very many kids get it. Not very many kids get very sick from it. And you know what? Parents might be more likely to get it, but the vast majority almost to all moms and dads who get sick with coronavirus get better. The thing we want to be careful with, the people we, the, the uh, coronavirus is the most dangerous is grandmas and grandpas and people who are already sick with something else. Like if somebody has cancer, those are the people who can get super sick from coronavirus and that are at higher risk. So we want to be careful, not just for us, we want to be careful to protect our grandmas and grandpas. So instead of going up to your grandma, she's really old or someone who might be sick with something else, so giving them a kiss, we might want to video chat and take time to tell them we love them over the video. And grandmas and grandpas love that. So take time with your grandmas and grandpas and with your friends, but especially if they're kind of sick or very old, make sure that you're doing it over video. Okay, here's some things we can do our best. First of all, eat lots of healthy food, like vegetables. I like this, is super easy. I pull this out of the fridge, put it on the table, boom, I got my veggies. Number two, drink lots of water. I take this around with me, drink lots of water, stay healthy. I drink about two of these bottles full every day. Other than get your sleep, I have my favorite pillow right here. I love my favorite pillow. When I fly places, I even take it on the airplane with me, okay? If you have a favorite pillow, make sure you're using it. Get enough sleep. Don't stay up late, okay? And the other thing, don't worry. I, this actually is really true. The Bible says don't worry, but you know what? Scientists say don't worry as well. If you're super worried about getting sick, you're actually less healthy and you're more likely to get sick. So do your best to be healthy and be careful. And they know what? Trust God with the rest. The other thing we can do, like we just talked about, is sometimes it might be best not to see our friends or our grandmas and grandpas in person if they don't live in the same house as us. And when that isn't best, let's take time to call them or video chat with them, right? FaceTime call them. 
It's like an exercise. It's like so much fun. You gotta go and you gotta stay healthy, right? You don't just wanna stay inside and watch movies all day. You wanna be healthy and going outside is great. People don't really get that sick from being outside because the sickness comes from our breath. When you're outside, the, the outside there's so much air, it takes your breath away and, and uh, it's not that uh, high a risk. And so you see there's a picture of we went swimming as a family outside. It was super fun and it was actually quite safe, okay? And then wash your hands regularly. If you can, use some hand sanitizer, okay? It's a really important thing. I carry a little bottle of hand sanitizer around with me. And I use that. I go into Walmart when I come out with groceries or whatever. I just sanitize my hands and it helps keep me safe and keeps my family safe, okay? The other thing that is super important, scientists keep finding out more and more that masks actually matter. Because again, coronavirus goes through our breath as we put a mask on. And that helps keep people safe, okay? So if you're gonna go inside, you're gonna go inside a Walmart, or you're gonna go inside your church, or when you're inside your school, it's super helpful to wear a mask because that keeps your breath from spreading. And if everyone wears a mask, everybody is way, way safer. This makes a super big difference. The doctors and scientists are telling them, you know what, I believe them. I think they know what they're talking about. The other thing is stay six feet apart, okay? I'm gonna measure out here six feet. Six feet is here. This is six feet right there, okay? So I know you're not gonna go around with a measuring stick saying, hey, you stay away from me, six feet. Whoops. Six feet, you stay away from me, right? We're not gonna do that, but just think in your mind, it's about as wide as your daddy's arms are. If your daddy stuck out his arms, that's about six feet, so you wanna be about six feet away from other people, okay? And the last thing I wanna talk about today is be a kid. Let adults do the worrying. You know what? It's the government's job to worry, and they are worrying about it. They're spending billions of dollars trying to find uh, um, ways to keep people safe. And you know what? It's also other adults called scientists and doctors. It's their job to work. They get paid to worry about coronavirus and they're working super hard to find medicines to help people who are sick from coronavirus to get better. They also find medicines like vaccines to stop people from getting sick with coronavirus. They get paid to worry about it. The government, they get paid to worry about it. You know what? Your parents' job is to worry about stuff. What's your job? Your job isn't to worry. Let adults do the worrying. Your job is to be a kid to be hopeful about God's love and trust God's promises. Number two, be careful. But number three, be a kid. Let adults do the worrying. But you know what? This badger here had a lot to worry about. Let's see how his situation with that big scary snake turned out. Okay, so back here in our nature video we have Mr. Badger. He's not very happy. There's a giant python trying to trying to coil around him and trying to have him for a, for a super stinky supper. And now look, this giant killer bites right in the bone. And this badger's not very happy. Oh, baby the bone. This snake is trying to eat me for supper. And now I have a jackal biting me in the bone. Now the snake, he's getting mad at the jackal. Look at him. And he's trying to bite the jackal. But psst, you leave me alone, Mr. Jackal. I'm trying to have my supper. Leave me alone. Now the snake, look at him. He's trying to keep the jackal away because he thinks the jackal wants to steal his supper. And the badger, he's in there. And man, it is a bad day for Mr. Badger, but he's fighting that. He's not giving up hope. He's like, you get away from me, Mr. Snake. Get away. Oh, I don't want your hugs. Go hug somebody else. Get away. Get, 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 get. And he's there, and that badger, he's fighting back, he's not giving up hope, the jackal, he's sneaking around, and you're like, oh, look at that, the badger's going out, and right there, he's looking at, and the camera's going to be like, hey, you, you want to help me out here? Now look, this badger just seems about to be the snake supper, now he turns around, and he grabs the snake, and so the snake having him for supper, he's like, man, I'm going to have your snake for supper, come here, Mr. Snakey Snake. You think you can eat Mr. Badger? <clears throat> Mr. Badger, what? He got the jackal again! I love the jackal! But you know what? This badger is determined. He is determined. He's not giving up hope. He's like, you can get away. He grabs that snake. He's like, mm, I'm going to have snake for supper. <laughs> snake and supper. I love snake and supper. And barbecue sauce. Don't you bite me on the bum again. I'm going to zone out. Get out of here. That badger, look at him. 
He is gonna have that snake for supper no matter I'm what. Kill him anyway. <laughs> kill him again. My supper. Hmm. You bit me on the bum, and you bit me on the bum. You gotta go away. Get your own supper. Hmm. Get out of here. And he goes back and he grabs that snake. Oh no! He's scared the jackal away. He turns around. He is gonna have that snake for supper. Look at that! Isn't that amazing? That snake was gonna have the badger for supper, and now that badger's like, no way, man! I'm gonna have this snake for my supper. Ha! And these jackals are trying to get in there, get a free meal. No way, says the. Badger, he takes this snake all the way into his home, and that's enough meat for him to eat for several days. Now, I you know what is so awesome is those jackals came in there. Well, that snake did a sneak attack, and he didn't end up getting anything, but he got eaten for supper. Well, then those jackals came in there, and they tried to steal the food. They were either going to steal the badger for food, or then they wanted to steal the snake for food. And thankfully, that badger fought them off. He won the battle, and the jackals who were trying to steal other people food got nothing well you know what if you don't feel you have any hope remember the story of the badger don't give up okay there's always hope when there's God so if you want to be a kid of hope we learned about today is number one be hopeful remember God's amazing promises in his Bible on how much he loves you and how he has a plan for you okay remember the, the the Bible promises and pray those Bible promises in your life be careful okay trust science right these scientists aren't making this stuff up they're saying be careful wear your mask when you're around other people indoors um, be healthy drink lots of water eat your veggies use hand sanitizer okay so be careful keep other people safe even though kids usually don't get very sick from coronavirus and the last thing is be a kid let a dust do the word they're getting paid to worry about this it's their job to worry about this it's your job to be a kid have fun and stay healthy let's close with a word of prayer. Let's fold our hands. Let's close our eyes. Let's pray to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this wonderful, beautiful Sabbath day. I pray that you bless every boy and girl out there, Lord. It's kind of been a scary year. It's been a weird year with all this coronavirus stuff. But Lord, we believe that you are still our God. You still love us. And you still want to give us hope. Help us to have hope in you, to trust in you. Help us to be careful. And help us to let the adults do the worrying. And for the kids, just to be careful kids. In Jesus' name, all the kids said, Amen. Amen. Hey, listen, God loves you. We love you. Your parents love you. Your teachers love you. Your, your pastors love you. Your Pathfinder, Sabbath school leaders, we all love you. And we hope that you can stay a kid of hope. Have a great week, and I will see you next time. That tastes yummy? Mm -hmm. Open it up. Guys, put your chips in it and I sit. That is disgusting. <laughs> Let me see. Mm. Not as bad as I thought. You like it? Yeah. There, don't put your lips on it. Mm. Want some more? Yummy. No. no. <laughs> And some of us love the power of power tools like the super awesome all electric chainsaw. You wanna do it? Okay, here, hold on. Right there. Okay, pull the trigger. That works perfect. Show you again. Remember this? Edit this.